Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition stops stories. Hundreds of St. Lucians to benefit from government's newly launched electricity assistance program. The Ministry of Health receives a further COVID-19 assistance from PAHO and is celebrating the International Year of Plant Health. The government of St. Lucia continues to roll out social and economic intervention programs as thousands of St. Lucians grapple with the financial fallout from COVID-19. On Wednesday, 14th October 2020, government signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited, Lucilec, giving life to the Electricity Assistance Program. The MOU was signed during a live ceremony on the National Television Network. The initiative provides bill payment relief to qualifying individuals. Honorable Leonard Mantout is the Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. All is set for the start of this electricity, electricity assistance program, which will see the application of electricity bill credits for of $75 per month to qualify, qualified households for a period of six months from October 2020 to March 2021. I view this as another welcomed intervention, which I am sure will be very much appreciated by beneficiary households. On behalf of the Ministry of Equity, I wish to express profound gratitude to everyone who contributed to the design of this initiative and who I am sure will assist with the implementation. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Honorable Alan Chasney, says the Electricity Assistance Program was designed to add value to the lives most affected by the pandemic. The initiative offers assistance to groups of persons we believe are extremely vulnerable and in need of extension or of support by the government. The program offers a credit to participants that is in line with the average monthly consumption of low income household. Persons who meet the criteria and have decided to opt into the program will receive the nominal credits on their September 2020 to February 2021 electricity bills. These credits would be applied by LUSLEC and paid for by the government of St. Lucia. We anticipate that approximately 5,000 to 6,000 St. Lucians will benefit under this program. The government has embarked upon a broad-based consultation over the past six to eight months and has worked closely with public sector agencies, private sector entities, civil society, not-for-profit organizations, and statutory bodies to develop various strategies and interventions. One such organization is the St. Lucia Electricity Services Limited. We are very pleased today to participate in this signing ceremony, which is symbolic of the, our partnering with the Electricity Company Services to make this intervention possible. On Thursday, 15th October 2020, Lucilec will receive the first list of qualifying individuals for the relief program. Trevor Luizzi is the Managing Director of Lucilec. The efforts at developing the framework and arrangements pertaining to the EAP commenced in late June and here we are today to sign off on an MOU that will guide the process. I want to thank the government of St. Lucia for initiating this program. But I need to say a special thanks, and I hope I don't offend some of the other persons. A special thanks to Mr. Jonai Leos from the Ministry of Finance and Mrs. Irene Gasper from the Ministry of Equity for their tireless efforts at ensuring we got to this point today. Managing Director of Lucilec, Trevor Luisi. In the meantime, the Ministry of Equity says it has been challenged in meeting the increasing needs of St. Lucians affected by COVID-19. The Ministry continues to provide expanded assistance to persons on the Public Assistance Program, the 312 clients on the Child Disability Grant, 183 children in foster care, 78 people living with HIV, as well as income support for 4,263 non-NIC contributors, totaling $6.4 million. Another significant intervention is the expansion of the Public Assistance Program, PAP, or the welfare program by 1,000 eligible households from 2,600 to 3,600. 
as I speak. Extension officers of the ministry are in the field engaged in a PAP rectification and expansion exercise. And from November 2020, qualifying households based on the application of the SLNet 3.0 will receive cash transfers in keeping with established payments, with established payment amount to households under the PAP. As some of you may know, the government of St. Lucia has already secured donor funds of over US $700,000 from the India-UN Development Partnership Fund and the World Food Programme and its donors to support this initiative. Government also provided $3 million to the SSDF Educational Assistance Programme. Food packages, hot meals, care and hygiene kits are also forming part of the Ministry's overall social stabilization program. As part of efforts to investigate case number 29 of COVID-19 and contact tracing, the Ministry of Health will be undertaking the necessary interventions in communities including assessments and health education. The Ministry of Health invites residents of the community of Oléon Denry to an outreach activity at the Paradise Inn in Oléon Denry on Thursday, October 15th and Friday, October 16th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. for assessment and testing for COVID-19. The intervention will also focus on health education, on infection and prevention control measures, such as use of face masks and hand hygiene. The ministry asks for your cooperation and participation in this activity. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has received a consignment of a personal protective equipment from the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. We have Lisa Joseph with the story. The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, has made a donation of personal protection equipment, PPEs, to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. PAHO Country Program Specialist, Reynold Hewitt, says the donation is a recognition of support to the ministry for its response to COVID-19. The funding grant that made the donation possible was made available from the Canadian government and the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Through technical cooperation with St. Lucia, Powell has provided more than half a million US dollars in assistance to the Ministry of Health since the onset of the pandemic. We are satisfied with the achievements made by the government of St. Lucia and the leadership of the Ministry of Health in their effective and measured response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is anticipated that the PPEs will support infection prevention and control program to strengthen its case management and screening of COVID-19 cases in St. Lucia. As we progress through the phase of the pandemic, the health system needs to continue to be prepared and respond to other health emergencies and support disease surveillance and prevention activities of any new or existing infectious disease. The UK government has pledged more than £1 billion to counter the impact of COVID-19 globally, as well as to find and distribute the vaccine. Steve McCready is the resident British Commissioner in St. Lucia. The Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office has also adapted over 200 programmes, as well as using centrally managed programmes to channel these resources to the global response. I'm very delighted that the UK has supported PAHO's COVID-19 response here in the Caribbean uh, through the World Health Organization and top this up with further support to eight Caribbean states throughout, uh, throughout the Caribbean. And this has been done through the Caribbean development team of the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. This has uh, is, uh, is, uh, resulted in a combined total so far of 55 million Eastern Caribbean dollars being used in the Caribbean to combat coronavirus. St. Lucia is also benefiting from the commitment of the Government of Canada to the global COVID fight. The Canadian government has provided $5 million to the region. St. Lucia has been allocated $700,000 in equipment. This follows diagnostic equipment that was presented to the Ezra Long Lab. We have here PPEs, but there's also medical respirators, me medical um, and respirators, masks and face shields and so on. Um, it's, uh, it's <laughs> initially when I was seeing that the progress uh, in terms of procuring everything was so slow when we, we were doing this back in probably April, I thought it would be not relevant anymore. But unfortunately, seven months down the road, this is still very, very relevant for every country as we still were facing, you know, the threat of 
second waves and so on. So in a way, I'm, I'm happy that it's here, uh, even though it would have been, I would have preferred before, but it's still very, it's extremely relevant, unfortunately. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac, expressed a profound gratitude of the government and people of St. Lucia to the donor partners. It is with the generosity of friendly governments such as Canada, who is here today handing over much-needed PPEs and medical equipment that assist us in our continued efforts to contain COVID-19. I wish to take this opportunity to express our deepest gratitude to all frontline workers around the world. Our frontline workers are endangering their own lives to strengthen our healthcare systems and protect every single one of us who have survived COVID-19. As part of the Ministry of Health's agreement with PAHO, the ministry is to provide periodic reports on the achievements made to control COVID-19, manage infection, prevention and control among healthcare workers, interventions at ports of entry, case management, risk communication, and community involvement. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Ministry of Agriculture joins the United Nations in celebrating the International Year of Plant Health 2020. More from Anisia Antoine. The Research and Development Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives hosted a tree planting ceremony in an effort to promote actions which protect plant health and to raise awareness on how protecting plant health can safeguard lives, the environment and boost economic development. The Acting Minister for Agriculture, Honorable Herod Stanislaus, urged the public to ensure that plants being imported to St. Lucia meet phytosanitary requirements to help reduce the spread of plant pests and diseases. The urgent reality is that plant health is increasingly under threat. Climate change and human activities has altered ecosystems, reducing biodiversity and creating new niches where pests can thrive. At the same time, international travel and trade has tripled in volume in the last decade and can quickly spread pests and diseases around the world, causing great damage to native plants and the environment. Colleagues, protecting plants from pests and diseases is far more cost-effective than dealing with full-blown plant health emergencies. The Caribbean Agriculture Research and Development Institute, CARDI, has been working closely with the Ministry of Agriculture in educating industry stakeholders on the measures that should be adopted to ensure that the safety of food production is sustained. CARDI's representative to St. Lucia, Andrea Vera, highlighted the importance of initiatives such as the tree planting ceremony. I want us to think for a moment about the situation globally with COVID-19 and think about this from an angle of plants. So we have a disease that is affecting our human race throughout the world. What if we had a disease that was affecting all of our crops so that they're dying off? What's gonna happen to us in terms of food? And if you think about that for a minute, it brings home the importance of food security and ensuring that we take care of our plants pest and disease management, integrated pest management approaches, agroecological approaches, our quarantine procedures, the health and safety of trans movement of crops and plant materials throughout the region and throughout all of our countries. We bring things into St. Lucia. We need to ensure that all of these things are safe and protected because we don't want our food industry to be severely affected to the point where we cannot feed our people. And therein lies the very importance of international plant health and all of the measures that we as the Ministry of Agriculture in the region, in St. Lucia, the agencies like CADI, ICA, the FAO, all come into play to ensure that we teach persons and we educate persons on the measures and practices that should be used and adopt, adapted to ensure that safety of our food production industry is sustained. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations estimates that up to 40% of food crops are lost due to plant pests and diseases annually. 
From the Information Unit at the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. As part of its activities for Financial Information Month 2020, the Bankers Association of St. Lucia has been active in educating the general public and giving back to the poor and elderly. Representatives from the various banks came together recently to pay a special visit and make a donation to the Villa St. Joseph Home for the Elderly. It's not every day that the staff and residents of the Villa St. Joseph Home in Denry gets visitors, but it was indeed a special occasion. Members of the Bankers Association of St. Lucia chose to bless the home with a much welcome donation of essentials to include food items, toiletries, cleaning agents, water, and even a variety of fresh fruit for its residents as part of its activities for Financial Information Month. According to bank officials, COVID-19 has negatively impacted everyone, including the elderly and those who take care of them and they both need support. As part of our mandate in reaching out to our communities and on behalf of the Bankers Association, in recognition of FIM 2020 Financial Information Month, I would like to offer you this donation. Food items, grocery items, we have cleaning supplies as well, we have some fruits and water. We know that this will go a long way and we're hoping during this time, this pandemic, it will assist you to take care of our elderly that we definitely care for. Chairperson of the Home Tora Dandas and the residents didn't hold back in expressing how grateful they were for the assistance. On behalf of Villa St. Joseph, the board of directors, the management and the residents of the villa, we would like to thank the Bankers Association for this wonderful donation they have given to the residents. This will go a long way since um, right now, because of the pandemic, our budget has been stretched and I think this will help us to do what we have to do for the residents. We thank you very much. Oh, okay, that's okay. I'd like to say something for all of you. Mm -hmm. Come and see us. Yes. Villa. Mm Villa. -hmm. St. Joseph, mm -hmm. and come and give all the poor people mm -hmm. in this world. And God, God going to bless all of you. Thank you. Coming along and have a blessed day. Thank you so much. And, and I want all of you to reach home very safely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. The theme for Financial Information Month is financial empowerment through education. And for its regional partners, the focus this year is on reaching out to the public and helping to educate and build financial resilience during this global pandemic. The Villa St. Joseph Home has been in existence for over 30 years, caring for the elderly in the community of Denry. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquarium. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol with Primus Hutchinson. Monsieur Ta, Jesse. Monsieur Madame du Vatman, qui ne va se conserver les pour information au gouvernement de la CGIS et Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, qu'a posé ton Nouvelle Aquayol, posé ton Primus Hutchinson. Ministre de Santé, présentement. Ka conduit investigation concernant de la mort à résultat de la fièvre dengue. Si le rapport au département de santé, tous les deux individus sont en bas de l'aménagement de l'hôpital Owen King, quand ils ont été parés de la fièvre dengue. 
ou pas le département de santé qui a dit qu'il y avait tout ce test là à sous la fête pour l'agence de santé publique à Caraïbes là pour trouver une confirmation. Et qu'à présent, le ministère a aspé ces résultats, ces tests là. Présentement, c'est aussi j'ai enregistré un cas de mort par le et que yo pour le présent, qui a conduit une investigation concernant deux lots de la mort en relation avec le mouvement de la fête là. Depuis le 3 octobre, c'est aussi j'ai enregistré 640 cas de mort. L'âge là qui mon a trouvé affecté, c'est 19 ans. Mais il a affecté, commencé, et puis 10 enfants à l'âge 3 semaines pour les plus grands citoyens, jusqu'à 84 ans. 49% de ces cas-là, c'était un mois à août et 65% qui arrivaient à l'hôpital, étaient en bas à l'âge 14 ans. Le département de santé explique que, malgré le rapport, j'ai sorti de toutes ces régions pays pays concernant la fièvre dengue, mais ça en face à nord plus. C'est en face de notre plus hier, et qu'on passe à l'âge à sortir. Pendant Castri, Gozilek, Babono, ensemble, tu as adégué 34%. 17 et 8% de façon qui en est trouvé mentionné. En face de toute cette ci je vais trouver 14% en cas de Après ça, c'est des nuits, et puis 10% et avec micro 6%. Selon le docteur Michel François, qui est épidémiologiste national pour cette ci en parmi ces parents là en face à Nord, Castrim, Exo et Babono, qui portaient plus de dengue pendant le sud de pays, ces villages de Nuit et de Fort, qui portaient plus. Alors, il a fait plus de la savent que la fièvre là a simé fort tout bonnement et qui a commencé à attaquer les gens. Et puis, la fièvre, mal tête, peine des yeux, avec mauvais gâteau, pas de sol. En parmi l'autre signe, c'est mauvais mal boudin, vomissement, sensible avec nécessaire, nous à la selle ou en parmi l'autre. Docteur François a conseillé les gens qui ont fait ça pour immédiatement aller au docteur. Il a aussi conseillé le public pour prendre ses précautions contre le couvert de l'eau et l'autre sac qui a été fait de l'eau, le service prêt pour tuer ses mains et l'autre précaution qui est nécessaire. Il y a un autre business qui est engagé en affaires de manufacture, ça veut dire un business qui a produit divers articles pour vendre. J'ai trouvé l'occasion pour vendre en région Caraïbes la compagnie Chemico qui a produit plusieurs articles de nettoyage pour Place Business. J'ai aussi trouvé l'occasion pour Jean Business à Dominique acheter ces produits là. Depuis l'année 2019, Export Saint Louis a fait un arrangement ça là et puis Dominique à présent ces négociations ça là a apporté bon résultat. Premier shipment pour pays Dominique qui a un conteneur 20 pieds longé qui a apporté divers produits chimiques pour servir à caille domestique, pour nettoyer et tenir un caille et place business propre. Chef, ça c'est grand chef de la compagnie Chemico, Thomas Rose, lui dit qu'il y a trois plaies qui, à la fin, et après plusieurs négociations, il a commencé à éclater et la route la plus favorable. Rose, Rose lui déclare qu'il n'y a plus de confiance en la qualité de produit de la compagnie Zalani et plus toujours de manière très haut au résultat des maladies de Corona. Et vous remercie Export Saint Louis Auta en dégoué succès au trouvé pour dire ces négociations. Le chef Export Saint Louis Sonita Daniel dit que c'est une responsabilité à Jean Sala pour délivrer yon, pour délivrer pour client en dégoué avec bonne qualité, considérant ça qui est nécessaire. Mais vous avez opéré à la paix de la maladie de Corona. Export Saint Louis a continué pour faire assurer que tout client yo que vous avez désir à sur la place. Là. Mademoiselle Daniel a ajouté que ces pays carrés comme là, avec OCS là, qui a placé autant de force à sur la place. Et l'agence ça là, qui a fait tout ça qui est possible pour pouvoir l'avantage de l'occasion ça là, qui ces pays là, qui a présenté. J'ai eu pour institution pour jeunes garçons à Massad Gozile. Ça c'est jeunes garçons qui ont brisé une bonne direction à la vie avec les qui pénichent ces pays là. Ça c'est M. Wang Samson, de qui vision pour institution ça là. C'est pour changer l'opinion et le quartier public là à ce jeune garçon. Selon Samson, ce garçon a accompli en lot l'État avec l'autre disposition qui est nécessaire pour y vivre au pays en société cette ci Ce jeune garçon a déjà participé à un grand sport de l'autre pays et conférence aussi. Il a déjà écrit une grande examination et une institution qui a continué pour établir un programme pour aider et pour réhabiliter l'esprit nouveau en caractère de ce jeune homme. Ça là. Généralement. Pour faire ici en place que les jeunes gens qui sont venus, qui ont quitté 
avec un papier qui nous tue, il n'y a ni qualification pour travailler dehors. Um, pour ni moun ici a, qui est professionnel, tout le monde qui est employé ici, c'est le monde qui est professionnel et qui travaille en, en primaire, l'intérêt, c'est jeune jeunes monde. Là. Um, et avec ça, nous avons eu le monde qui sort ici a, et qui a réhabilité en en, en, en manière dont nous um, contribué en comité. Et ça, c'était la voie, j'ai eu la restitution pour les jeunes garçons en massade, M. Uh, Wang Son Son. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle, mesdames et messieurs. Moi, je vous autant pour regarder, je vous avoir une invitation pour jeûner, puis je vous dire, comment ça fait la vie Quand je vous ai posé une nouvelle à quoi Alors, pour ça, je vous ai posé une nouvelle Jesse. Merci à Peel Primus. Uh, well, we've come to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or the YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming.